A tropical cyclone is forming in the eastern Atlantic on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for June 19th. Well, there's still no depression or name storm yet in the Atlantic and so on the worldwide screen we're just looking at the old system Bipajoy which is still holding on as a tropical depression well over the interior of India. Looks like the models were right when they were talking about a slow decay of the storm. In the Atlantic though we've got three areas of interest marked now. Really a pronounced start to this season on the way possibly. 80% chance we've still got for that system entering the central Atlantic, 10% further east and another 10% in the Gulf, in the uh, Caribbean Sea. Eastern Pacific, we've removed all chances for any development now for the next seven days at least, so no areas of interest anymore. I expect that will change fairly soon. The Eastern Pacific surely can't be kept quiet for much longer. In the Western Pacific, we've got a 10% area of interest, mainly towards the end of the seven day period. That's in the Philippine Sea to the southeast of the islands themselves. And of course, uh, Tropical Depression Bipojoy, which to its credit is still looking decent on satellite imagery, blowing up copious amounts of convection and probably still has some significant winds in there, up to about 30 miles per hour, an estimated central pressure of 993 millibars. Checking out the last 24 hours, satellite derived rain rate and you'll see that the world in general has been relatively quiet, there haven't been that many reds there on that imagery, although a few little spots over there in eastern India, uh, but not to do with Cyclone Bipodjoy, it's only producing small amounts of rain there. And this is the wide shot of the Atlantic right now and you can see all three systems already. Of course the main one that we're looking at has the highest chance of development but look how interesting that wave behind it is looking as well. It's also gathering momentum and rotation to an extent. And then that system in the, uh, south, uh, the southern Caribbean there which is blowing up a lot of convection but is really yet to get any kind of rotation or organization going at this juncture. Looking at the water vapour imagery onto that main invest there in the middle, uh, looking decent as well. It needs a bit more rotation and convection. And here is some more close-up imagery of the last few hours of this storm into the overnight hours for quite a while now. Its gradual movement is towards the west-northwest, its general movement I should say. And you can see its progression there. It's looking alright, uh, could be better. Uh, but it is on its way to becoming a tropical cyclone, I'm pretty sure, within the next 24 hours. And whilst we're here, very quickly, just to look at India on the radar there, and you can see Bipo Joy is still traceable on that radar, but not producing very much there. Sea surface temperatures, Eastern Pacific, still really getting quite hot there, 32 degrees Celsius, a little bit of warmth near Hawaii as well now. The Atlantic is getting very warm around the Isle of Youth and Western Cuba, and also around the Florida Keys there and Bahamas, up to 30 degrees plus. Uh, Gulf of Mexico also looking good, and the Gulf Stream extending well beyond the outer banks of North Carolina. Uh, the Atlantic, Eastern Atlantic, is warmer than usual as well. That's probably part of the reason why we're already seeing some main development region action. Western Pacific looks like this, pretty decent around the Philippines particularly there, but even in some higher latitudes, on the same latitude as Taiwan there further east, some temperatures above 30 degrees Celsius, so the Western Pacific is very much gearing up for open season over there. Indian Ocean, a few spotty areas in the Arabian Sea after Bipo Joy, uh, but in general it is warm enough to sustain tropical cyclones and strong ones, same too for the Bay of Bengal. Southwest Indian Ocean of course is uh, well away from its peak now entering the uh, winter months down there. Australian region the same as well, I believe some of our members in the Perth area got temperatures down to about 3 or 4 degrees Celsius and in the South Pacific there as well those temperatures are struggling now but still extending an appreciable distance south. 
The anomalies, the El Nino effect becoming quite clear in the eastern Pacific, but there's still that cool pool in the main part of the open waters there. Uh, Western Pacific also hasn't fully recovered from that area where the two typhoons were earlier that went uh, that took things below average. And of course, Bipo Joy's cold trail is still visible too. The Atlantic is pretty much above average, and look at the anomaly in the eastern Atlantic, massive right now, which will certainly aid these potential systems. The Atlantic Oceanic heat content is looking okay as well at low latitudes in the MDR, maybe a little bit too low for this system. Eastern Pacific also looking decent, uh, pretty chirpy actually, especially compared to last year. Um, I would say the Eastern Pacific's got quite a bit of energy there. And in the Western Pacific, of course, even more, the busiest basin in the world and it shows why. Computer models then, this is the GFS over the next five days and you'll see number one, that's the 92L, the Invest that's moving west-northwest and develops, number two off to its east there it is moving through and number three well off to the west there through the Caribbean, watch the sequence again and look at all three systems which everyone takes your interest the most but I'll talk about the middle one, 92L there getting stronger, becoming a hurricane there by the time we get to the 23rd of June and and then a strong category two by the looks of things there on that imagery as well as that other system to the west in the caribbean that becomes a tropical storm but weakens again in the yucatan channel rainfall values you can quite clearly trace the track of this potential storm as it curves northwards by the way the gfs has pretty much the strongest recurve on the models other models aren't so sure ecmwf most notably takes it into the leeward islands uh, and could be a significant storm there. But the GFS depicting that the storm would be stronger and more recurvature, showing 10 inches of rainfall out at sea and overland there only one or two. But that track could quite easily deviate, although a southward, further southward track would favor a more weaker scenario. So it's uh, one of those uh, things that we've got to weigh up. In the longer range, looking at the same area then, uh, watching this uh, potential system and it shoots up northwards there as a hurricane then has a little bit of a second thought and then it continues onwards and actually that's a hurricane landfall in Nova Scotia there on day 10 would you believe that um, so that's not completely out of the question for a Canadian maritime landfall uh, from a very extraordinary storm that would be at this time of year that is pretty much an August-September track, if we're being quite honest. Eastern Pacific shows two tiny tropical cyclones, maybe even three signatures there actually. A really small one there towards the east, which is just fascinating. If that actually happens, that would be pretty uh, something to watch. Uh, but uh, certainly it would um, cement the Eastern Pacific's poor start this year by having two tiny little storms. Uh, but that would get them off the grid and that would be in the later days of June. And in the Western Pacific for the same period then, day 5 to 10, this is what we're looking at here, a potential tropical cyclone that forms. Uh, by the time we get to day 7, uh, there is a signature there, that's why we're giving it 10%. becomes a tropical storm later on there on that forecast and doesn't last that long as it skirts across the, well, out at sea from the eastern coast of Luzon. So general movement there, northwestwards, turning northwards later on. That's the medium range, and that's all the serious stuff done with. So you can take a look at the Force 13 merch store, scan the barcode there on the top right, and that will take you straight there. All kinds of products right now, including my new favourite, the socks. And I'm uh, still waiting for Hone T-shirt also there as well as full season and individual store animations on request. In the silly range, this is what we've got then. So this system continues plowing through the Canadian Maritimes uh, on that scenario. And what happens much later on in the sequence? Well, another potential tropical cyclone that forms in the mid latitudes of the open Atlantic. They're right at the end of that loop. Uh, and that will be around July 4th. Of course, that is still an extremely long way away and that is subject to major change. It could completely dissolve or the GFS might follow that up later on with something more. 
and the eastern pacific during that same period there's another tropical cyclone that forms and that's more the kind that you would see in the eastern pacific with a big wind shield down the northern side and uh, quite large boisterous continuing through the western towards the west there and another one right behind it towards the end of that loop 3rd to the 4th of July. Uh, that's certainly what you would expect to see at this time of year with these two systems, but no guarantee that that's going to happen at all yet because that is still a very, very long range. But you can talk about that and anything else in the wide world of tropics right now by talking by joining our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical weather and general weather chat around the world. And plenty of places for off topic stuff as well. On this day, it was only two years ago, we had Tropical Storm Dolores, which was along the coast of Mexico right now as a strong tropical storm. We also had Tropical Depression Claudette, which had moved inland over the uh, southern United States and was moving off towards the northeast. And if I remember rightly, it became a tropical storm again over land. Was that the one? Uh, 2021 was a right blur for me, if I'm being honest. But that's those two storms there that were active on this day in 21. It'll always look pretty nice there. Back to today then, and the next name in the Atlantic surely can't be far away, it's Brett. In the Eastern Pacific, Adrian, still no clear sight of him yet. And in the Central Pacific, the next name on list one remains Hone, as it has been for a painfully long time. 23 storms so far this year, we are code blue. Next name in the Western Pacific is Tallinn, the North Indian Ocean, it's Tej. Of course, Bipo Joy still uh, sh casting its long shadow right now and still holding on to that Tropical Depression status. In the Southern Hemisphere, we've got 11 days left for another storm in the Southwest Indian Ocean before the names reload. Izani is next, the Australian region, Jasper, and in the South Pacific, it's Lola. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.